Greetings, Earthlings, Internetlings. Whoa, settle down, coffee. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Good to see everyone. Welcome to live stream number 42. Well, let's see who's here. I got to really work on my lighting in here. I didn't even turn on my, my overhead light. Maybe I should. Now, nah, worry about it. You guys can see me. Who's here? Radios is here. Of course, thank you so much. Jeffrey is here, present and accounted for. Mr. Barry is here. Of course, Bonnie is here. Always keeping me on my tippy toes. One minute early, yeah. Uh, radio's got three cameras yesterday, but only one is guaranteed to work. None are ever guaranteed to work. They might say that, but never guaranteed. I've gotten a lot of guaranteed to work cameras that don't work. Now, I know, Jeffrey, I'm a minute late. Hey, Gordon. My friend Mike is here. Greetings, film freaks. Let's see, uh, what's Jeffrey got? An old slash new digital camera coming tomorrow or Tuesday. You know, it's funny, Jeffrey, you mentioned that. Somebody a asked me, and we can't, we can't ignore the fact that digital is a, is a great uh, medium, but somebody asked me online, they asked, they said, I can't really afford film. I can understand that. I mean, getting into film, it's a little bit pricey nowadays. Uh, and they said, what would be like your ideal camera if you wanted to shoot digital, but make it kind of look like film? Still make it look very analog. So uh, the advice that I gave this person is something that I actually want to get again. I had one, but I had the Panasonic DVX-100. Do you guys remember those? They were like all the buzz when they first came out because they were they were 24p that you could shoot in 24p and you know essentially 24 frames per second progressive not interlaced and it had all of the fun fresh movements of old uh, analog film and so i shot some movies on that camera about three or four of them i don't remember how many exactly some short films and i really liked that camera and because it's the closest that I think I've ever come to emulating the look of true film. Now, I'm a film nut, so I, I will always emulate the look of film with film. But that was my advice. Radio says Mavica. I'm thrilled to have repaired another Bolex H16. Ooh, did you do it yourself, Mike? Flying, oh, we're not freaks. It's the rest of the <laughs> I'm not a freak, you're a freak. Uh, I fixed the button on the projector and I sent the rollers to Urbanski Film to be rebuilt. Oh, very cool. Larry knows what he's doing, uh, radios over at Urbanski. He's a great dude. True, Barry. <laughs> yeah, we're not freaks. <laughs> the rest of the world are. Got the Lego Polaroid SX70 yesterday. Awesome. <laughs> so, see, yeah, you did get a camera. Awesome. Polaroid Swinger is the working one. Nice. Greetings, Mr. Mark. <laughs> oh, look who wants to say hello. Uh, radios, I got them yesterday at the drive-in swap. I love drive-in swaps. Hello, Rimjet. Hello. Dave Knopp says, DVX100 shot true 16 by 9 Such good camera design, too. Yes, that's correct. I forgot about that. Uh, great cameras. Say, hi, Dave. Remember Dave? He came to the Nana Pops. Remember? He came and said hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Radios. The two were cheap Kodak, uh, Kodak circa 1970 that were some sort of tie-in with Swanson TV dinners. Oh, cool. Uh, yes. Spring was stuck. Oh, cool. You know, Mike, I have a, I have a Bolex H8 non-reflex. I got it really cheap, and I got it with a whole bunch of other things, like another Bolex. I got an H16 Wait, with it. Look, he called me Hello Kitty. Hello yes, Kitty. Look, Hello Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Say thank you, Mark. Mike says hello, Piper. Um, but but it, there's something wrong with the pull down mechanism in my H8, and I I have taken as much as I could possibly take apart. Tried taking the whole front face of it off, and then pulling. It just won't come apart. Everyone I've ever seen come apart, they do pretty easily, but this one I cannot get it apart to try to repair. It's the little, you know, that little weird 
metal arm that's on the little roller that kind of does this the pull down claw mine's all messed up and I cannot get it to work no it won't even grab the film it's just it's I don't know if it's off or loose or something I don't know I, a little in a little bit I might grab it it's right up here on a very basic Kodak point and shoot super 8 that worked for a second and crapped out <laughs> most of them do <laughs> all right give me a hug Mwah. love you. you you can come say goodbye later okay <laughs> smash the like button. smash the like button thank you Piper uh, it's not let me see Mike if I can just grab it it was right here I can't remember exactly what was the issue, but you can clearly see the little uh, D mount there. Um, everything seems to work fine. Bolex made modifications to the pull downs for all models. Also got a roll of 100 feet of FOMA R100 in double A. Awesome! I love FOMA. I think you guys know that. Like has been smashed. Thank you, Remjet. So. I might be wound. Oh, yeah, there was other issues now. I can't get the... I can't get this freed up, the button here. There, there's lots of issues with this. I don't know if it's worth taking or sending it to uh, do all maybe, or somebody to see about fixing it. You can usually get H8s pretty cheap, especially the non-reflex. You know, the... I have plenty of finders, but the non-reflex so I don't know if it's worth it it's worth taking it apart but they kind of scare me a little bit I did have the front completely off and well almost completely off I couldn't get it all the way to come all the way off but now as 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 it would be I can't even get it to fire so now my button is stuck I might have to spray some of that stuff you guys uh, want me to spray in in my uh what's a ma who's it not that thing um the contact cleaner i don't know or maybe a drop of three and one oil down in here to free that the button is stuck see it can you guys see that button now it does run it runs because i have run it before but i can't get it to uh that's right i can't get it to run again First try heat on the spring side to unwind the spring. How does that unwind the spring, Mike? Wait. Heat on the... What do you mean heat? Give it a good smack. You know, sometimes that works. <laughs> Percussive maintenance. <laughs> yeah, I can't get it to... I can't get that to free up in there. I remember that now. It, it used to. When I first got it, it worked. Everything ran fine. But the... Let me take the gate out. I'm telling you guys. I'm going to take it out. It's been a long time since I messed with it. Yeah. yeah it just, just something wrong. Deep inside here deep inside here I, I can see it too I can see that the claw there's something desperately wrong with it so I don't know if maybe taking just all of this stuff out and getting a uh, you know getting a really good look at it in there the problem is I don't know enough about H16s and H8s to make that determination on exactly what might be wrong with it I can tell you one thing for sure I can't make it any worse because it doesn't do anything right now. So, that's my H8 Saga. I have so many cameras laying around that don't that don't work. And I don't like that. Um, I also get another Siemens 16mm camera. Very cool, Bonnie. Uh, Radio says another is an Instamatic Hawkeye that had two corroded EXP is it expired 825 batteries in it. The lens is messed up on that one, on that one typo. Nice. I have a little camera I want to show you guys today that I got in trade for a developing. Uh, 
heat on the spring, Mike. I'm I'm just still. Common issue grease. Oh, grease. Wait, grease uh, got too thick. Okay, so heat, just like a hair dryer on that side. Which side is the spring actually on? Oh, it has to be this side, right? Can't be on that side because that's where the film goes in. So you just use a hair dryer or something on that side. Now I have a heat gun, but I know that would melt everything on the side. Um, grease globs up and doesn't let the spring unwind. Gotcha. New Film Boy 24 channel. Repair dash cam. <laughs> but you need some colored LED lights and a cat. <laughs> Boost the view. <laughs> Repair that <dat> camera. <laughs> Paul Morbid on his YouTube. Yeah, he does. I know. I. Yeah, Mark. I know. I know who Paul is, and um, he's a he's a neat guy. I just it's not that channel's not 100 percent for me. Um, but he does know what he's doing. Remove crank handle. Yep. While shutter button is pressed or locked. Point heat gun or hair dryer to the crank side. Carefully use the rewind coin. I think the problem is I think it's already fully wound. Yeah, I think it's fully cranked already. So, yeah, I could take this off, of course. The problem is it's... Yeah, Mike, it's not really my style. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, crank handle while shutter button is pressed or locked on. Okay. Point the heat gun or hair dryer to the crank side. Carefully. Next is to carefully use the rewind crank. So I may have to just try freeing it up with the heat. Put a little heat on it and then really just start working it a little bit. I don't know. Have you seen Noah's new video about the IMO? I did not. You know, I'm subscribed to Noah and I really like his channel, but I kind of quit looking because he hardly ever posts anymore. But uh, if he has an IMO video, I have to see it. That's 35 millimeter, baby. Tweaking the rewind while moving from uh, from motor engage and non engage. Okay, okay. You mean this the switch up here, the engage and disengage? I can't get it to disengage, but never use lots of pressure or angry cranking. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have a 16 also that came with that, an H16 non reflex. Seems to work. It's a little wonky, but I, uh, I've i never tried it. I've never used it because I use my Rex 1 back there if I'm going to use my Bolex. I'm now interested in an Elmo model camera with the large magazine, the Elmo ATL. Yeah, that's the one with the sticking out the back, right? Um, I like those Elmos that take... That, take, that, that have different formats that you can attach to them. I'd really like to get one of those. I can't remember the model number right here. C300 or something. I, I don't remember what they're called, but Elmo made those cameras where, where you, could, you, could, you could run double eight, single eight, super eight. You, you would just have to attach a different, a different magazine on it. Yeah, we'll talk Bolek fix. <laughs> I gotta try to get that off again. I wanna try to get that taken apart, but First things first, I got to get it to run. The magazine is on the top, huh? May, does it just take the big, like that big 200 foot magazine, the aftermarket one? I th by the way, I think all of that was sound film. I don't know if I've ever seen any silent film in the magazines. I could be wrong. Oh, you want that one too? Yeah, I don't remember what they're called. The Elmo, for some reason, C300 keeps coming to mind. But I know C300 was also a Canon model for for digital. I don't know. So let me let me let me get this out of the way really quick. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm going to have a live stream next week. Um, that would be the 28th. That is my birthday with my recently deceased father. We shared a birthday, so I'm not 100% sure I asked my wife. She goes, yeah, do a stream. That'll be fun. I don't really do anything. Um, I, I, I don't even really care. I don't care much about birthdays anymore when you get to my age. As a lot of you know, you, the birthdays you kind of forget. But I, um, 
I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I will definitely keep you updated. I may or may not have a live stream next Sunday. We shall see. But I'll let you know in the community tab for sure. It is, Mark. Okay, C200 or C300. Yes, okay. Uh, C200 is Super 8 or Double 8. C300 is... Oh, it, you can add uh, the Single 8 option. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mark, for that clarification. By the way, it's $39,000 for a Bell & House 70 millimeter camera. Good. Whoo! $39,000 is never good. <laughs> but, I mean, 70 millimeter cameras are very expensive. So, I don't know. I don't know enough about them. I really don't. I mean, it probably is not a bad price, considering that you used to buy Aeroflex 35 millimeter cameras for triple that. Uh, another camera I'm interested in is the Fairchild Regular 8 Sound. I'm not familiar with that one, radios. I know Fairchild, but I'm not familiar with that. Uh, I picked up a 400 foot roll of double X 16 millimeter with mag stripe. Any luck with recording 16 millimeter sound? My, um, my CP16 has a sound head mic. I've never used it though. In fact, I took it out. You can unplug them and kind of unscrew them and whatnot. And I and I honestly can't remember where I put it. It's in one of my cases, but I've never tried it. And I think because I don't have a means to be able to transfer that audio, I do have an Ekai projector that has a sound head in it. So I could, uh, I guess, effectively play it. But no, I've never tried it. I'm sure you still can. I have some sound, 60 millimeter sound film. Must mean 39 bucks. I, I don't know for a 70 millimeter camera. It's a movie camera, Bonnie. I don't I don't know. Yeah. No, I think she means 39 grand. <laughs> I wonder how rare regular eight sound films are. They have They're rare. I, I've seen them, um, but they are rare radios. They didn't, they weren't used, they weren't very widely accepted or used, um, but they did have sound striped regular eight film for a bit. Figured sound would be a long shot. Um, it is, I think, especially when you use something like a, um, I mean, it'd be great to project in a projector like I'm talking about, like my Ikai that I need to replace the whole lamp housing in, but. That would be kind of fun to have the sound built right into the into the film. But if you're not doing that, and I use my CP16, it has a crystal motor in it, so anything I can record, it syncs up pretty darn well. But that's when you scan it, of course. Um, I guess you could, pr I don't know if you could print to it, maybe? Been trying to get some peeps for a Discord slash film, or Discord film slash camera Discord. To visit during the stream. Get on over here, people. I think the Kodak Sound 8 was meant to be sound striped and then the audio recorded later. Well, they did. Yeah, I don't know how exactly it was with regular 8. Uh, only that I have seen a couple rolls of regular 8 that was sound striped. Yes, but I just looked it up again, and it was a Mitchell FC, specifically the Mitchell FC number 8. That's the 70 millimeter camera, Bonnie, I'm assuming. I have a few sound 60 millimeter projectors. Kodak, Victor, of course you do. I only have one sound 16. In fact, I only have one 16 millimeter projector, and I, like a doof, I messed it up because I wanted to make a telecine out of my projector. So I cut the wires on the old uh, incandescent bulb that's in there and pulled that housing out, and I was replacing it with with a 12 volt, um, pretty pretty high wattage LLD, L, LLC, um, LED, and it kept popping it. It was a 12 volt, that right? No, I mean a 120 volt or 110, whatever you're a household, but it would not stop popping the uh, the LED, burning it out. So. I just gave up. Now the projector's just been sitting. 
Ever a double Super 8 sound striped film? I've only ever seen silent. That's a really good question. I don't know. <laughs> I have a couple rolls of double Super 8. I think they're FOMA. But I don't have a double Super 8. Uh, I don't have a camera for them. That's a good question. Yeah, that is a good Yeah, you're right, Mike. That is a really good question. Um, Barry asked Bonnie, get a VistaVision camera. It shoots 70 millimeter format on 35 millimeter film horizontally. Is that the one that they're just coming out with, Barry? Or uh, is that the, uh, that's the one that's sort of in development right now? That is a, if that's the one I'm thinking of. Oh, or, or wait, no, that, didn't you send me a picture that's the old one from the 1900s? early 1900s or something what was that one what's that one we're thinking of it's kind of like the kind of like the lomo chemo lomo kino only only a real one like metal and it and it shoots a lot more frames that i want to get one of those i really do the kodak m100 is a manual load super 8 projector that's rare well, that's cool. You have one, radios? By the way, I had nothing to do before the stream started, so I am currently capturing my Oppenheimer DVD to an old VHS that I had laying around. Be an old VHS band. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> I should send my Hi8 double Super 8 camera everyone here community film production I should send my H8 double super 8 camera what is that art und to everyone here usually I'm good at deciphering fat finger mistakes send my yeah I know bullets H8 camera uh, to everyone here community film production that's not a bad idea let's do it let's do it let me make decisions for your cameras because you know I have one of yours and I'm making decisions for it we're gonna talk about your your uh, you make here in a minute oh in filmboy 24 did you see panavision's new panavision crystal 35 millimeter camera i have not i heard about it but i've not seen it yet oh you don't have it okay radios no it was in no it was in completion completion with the older panavision i think the robe was shot in vista vision Bolex H8 around <laughs> around to everyone, not art und around. <laughs> New Panavision is awesome. Who I used to own stock in Panavision. They used to be on. They used to trade on the New York Stock Exchange. This was in the 90s, I think. That I was. I had a little bit, not a lot, a couple hundred shares, but it didn't go anywhere. You know, I had it, held on to it for a few years and got rid of it. But uh, I think they're not publicly traded anymore. Um, I've been processing a whole boatload of this lately. This is a customer, by the way. But she sent me a whole bunch of 110 film. Now, I'm only bringing this up because I want to let you guys know that don't expect much. This is some of her negatives. <laughs> this is... Coda Color, Coda Color 2. Everybody's familiar with 110 film. It was the nifty little tiny 16 millimeter wide still film that fit in a 110 camera. I talk about it all the time. I buy the little 110 cameras whenever I can because I think they're so cool. Little slim cameras. I got a couple of them over there. So she sent me 17 rolls of this to process for her and some Super 8 film and whatnot. And I gotta tell you, this film was discontinued. They discontinued Coda Color 2, I think in 1981. And they started making it long before that. So anytime you're using C41 chemicals, um, or C41 film, or using C41 on old film, don't expect much. I'm getting I'm getting some very faint, overly grainy, overly fogged up images for her. 
she's going to be able to make out a lot of what was going on. Don't know if she's going to be be able to make out faces. But maybe, maybe it'll help her dispel a little bit of the mystery behind her old film. But I, ha I probably processed 30 rolls of Super 8 film in the last two weeks for people. It's been crazy. Bonnie says, Paul, Panavision posted a picture of it on Instagram, and when we are talking about the C16, I found one for about 40 bucks that I might get since mine came without the adapter, and this... Yeah, 40 bucks is almost worth it for the adapter, Bonnie. Are you mean the plate on the bottom? I think it was developed by VistaVision. It was uh, Paramount Pictures. Nice. Seems like old VistaVision was shot on 35mm film. Two perf pull down. I want to I want to try to remember what... Um, did she shoot it? Uh, she. It's all hers. She, it's family film. Remjet from late 70s, I guess. But this old C41, that Kodak, Kodak color stuff, it is so hard to get images from. Hey, Ted. VistaVision runs horizontally. Yes. Right? Yeah. Two perk pull down was Technoscope. 110 is just 16 millimeter film. It is, Jeffrey. It's it's 16 millimeter wide. Um, and there's not, there's, the perforations are totally different, but, um, Yes, 16 millimeter film. In fact, you guys know how I process 110 film, right? This is a standard Patterson reel. You guys know that Patterson reels hold about five feet of film each. This will hold about five feet of 35 millimeter or 35 or uh, five feet of what, what's the, uh, the middle one? The, um, 127. The number was escaping me. About five feet of 127 film or about five feet of 120 film or 620 film, right? However, it won't hold... That's super eight. It won't hold 16 millimeter film. It just doesn't go down far enough, right? Well, when I want to process this right there... There's no way to do it. They don't. You can get one of the cheesy little tanks that's made for 16 millimeter or, or 110 film, but they don't work very good. I actually have one. Or you can do what I did. You guys remember this, don't you? I have my little two reel Patterson, and I have several of these. I also have a five reel, which is really cool. Check it. You guys ready? Go from this. Doesn't go any farther down. To that. Ooh la la! I made my own 16 millimeter or 110 film Patterson reel. Now it's a little bit primitive. It's not exactly like this one because it spins. See, it spins all the way around, and on a true one, it doesn't. It's got the little stops in it. You guys know that, right? Right, right, yeah, without every... Also got 20 brand new 35 millimeter canisters for bulk loading. Very nice, Bonnie. I only have two or three of those. Adapt or die, baby. <laughs> I, th I think I did a video on this. It, it took nothing more than a hacksaw and an old, what do you call it? Uh, come on, come off of there. Oh, I'm going to take it off of here first. A hacksaw and an old film canister. You know, the, the little canisters that your film comes in, the little black plastic. Boom. There's the black plastic from the film canister. Just cut. And there's the Patterson. That's all. You just cut one side of it down so it fits. Put your spacer on so that this fits on properly. And this is just the part you cut off from this, twist it on, and look at that. You line up right there where the film feeds in, and then you can ratchet it yourself like that. Now you could spin it all the way around, but that's not going to work. So I just ratchet it myself just a little bit. It works great. So that's how I was doing my, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> that's how I was doing my uh, 110 film. 
Where on the merch shop can we buy one? <laughs> I'm so lame. I don't have anything for sale ever. <laughs> I support this channel by sheer love of what I do. Uh, and a Kodak hoodie, since H&M and Kodak apparently have a collab right now. I did not know that. Cool. H&M and Kodak. H&M is one of my youngest, Piper's favorite stores. Um, I wanted to... I have a little film I want to show you guys, too. It's kind of cool. Oh, you know what else I did? All right. Now that I'm on my thing. Um... I took a random roll of Super 8 film. I don't even know what was on it, to be honest. It was a, a somebody's film. I have several rolls of uh, when I used to do Super 8 Sundays or Small Film Showcase, where I would just show an old roll of film, not one that I processed, just a, like a family, family roll of film. Now, I'm warning you guys, if you blink, you're going to miss it, right? If you blink, you're going to miss it. This is... I... <laughs> I wanted to see just for fun. Don't don't call me crazy because I'm sure you already do. I'm not that guy. But just for fun, I wanted to see how many frames I could scan on my flatbed. I use an Epson Perfection V600 flatbed scanner for all of my still film scanning. So so I wanted to see when you lay it across, not long ways, but just across the scanning surface. The you know the top is open, the bottom is open. How many frames of Super 8 could I scan at one time and could I import that into Photoshop, do the uh, selection marquee and select each frame, save each frame individually as a JPEG file, import that into Blackmagic, uh, Blackmagic, into DaVinci, Blackmagic, and see that if I could kind of stabilize the perforation and see for less than one second of film, you're gonna see it in one second, it's less than a second long. Here's the, that was my scan, right? It's 16 frames. I can get exactly 16 frames in one scan. Now, if I turned it, if that's going across, so making like a plus on my scanner, if I did it long ways, sort of parallel with the scanner, I'd have to cut the film because you gotta leave the top open. Uh, you could probably get three times as much but I didn't want to cut the film. So hold your eyelids open, Jeffrey, just like uh, Clockwork Orange. <laughs> <With two pig. laughs> All right, if you, I'm telling you guys, if you blink, you're going to miss it. <laughs> but, but focus, I'll play it a couple times, but focus on the, it's a little bit out of focus because I, I don't, it was just sitting, I had it taped to the, to the glass. So here's, here it is, let me, Look at the perf, though. The shakiness, by the way, is the original filmer. I mean, if one were so inclined as to spend hours and hours and hours and likely days <laughs> trying to perfect, you know, if, they, if there was no other option on the planet and you had nothing but free time, you probably could scan an entire 50-foot or even 100-foot roll of 16 millimeter it'd take you a week but that was pretty solid yeah right mike hey russell interesting yeah the purse looked really solid i, I really enjoy using uh davinci resolve for just for that for you know uh, stabilizing the perfs i know i know ted <laughs> like i say i don't recommend it and that's probably as far as i'll ever go with it just 16 frames so i'm showing you 16 frames at 18 frames per second. You do the math. <laughs> yeah, it's a way lot of work. I think my only, I don't know, maybe one of these days I'll, I'll try to make a little, you know, maybe uh, a little thingamajig where, where the purse actually, you know, kind of sit down in and you can move it a certain amount and so you're scanning the next batch of frames and you're not overlapping them. Just for fun. It is absolutely not practical. But it was fun experimenting. Very cool. I did a similar thing with a four lens 35 millimeter camera to make some. That see, that's cool. I mean, we're not going to win any any awards doing that. But if you, uh, you know, it's like playing solitaire. <laughs> I'm fun, you know. 
There is a video on YouTube of someone who scanned an eight millimeter movie using a. F Ken, is that the uh, the one the riding the horse? And he had, or was that the sixteen millimeter? I think I know who you're talking about, and it's an older video, right? And and did they uh, they had some some code or something that they were also offering or some way to do it? But I mean, it's an option for those of you that just want to shoot film and see a small portion of it. Like Mike, I know you dabble a little in uh, processing, so you want to see a small portion of it. Now only two, two minutes, 55 seconds more. <laughs> oh, two minutes, you mean two minutes and 59.2 seconds more. <laughs> Oh, is H&M is Swedish? Nice. You guys remember the Swedish bikini team? That was a thing back in the 80s. Swedish bikini team. <laughs> I don't, why do I remember that about Swedish? Uh, okay, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, coffee, by the way. Mm. I am the trailer park supervisor. This is an interesting coffee. It's a uh, Brooklyn Brooklyn Bean Brewery made that coffee, and it's a cinnamon some cinnamon Subway it's called by Brooklyn Bean Brewery. I have nothing to do with them, by the way. It's just a, I got a big big box of coffee, different ones, Keurig ones, and that was in there. I'm not usually a fan of of flavored coffee. My brother got them actually for my my dad's big celebration of life. My brother older brother bought a. Uh, big box full of all these different coffees and he let me have them when the thing was over. So I've been experimenting with them and man is that mm, that good. Speaking of my brother Mike I know, Mike, I know you uh, uh, Flying O, I know you um, have looked him up a little bit. My brother is a professional magician. I've talked about it once I think but he's popped on here before he's really good at what he does. He's been doing it for his whole life. Um and you and it's it's kind of neat to it's kind of neat to say that tonight in Los Angeles he is performing magic for Bill Gates and company. Best thing about this, yeah. We also have companies like IKEA, Spotify, Volvo, and Hasselblad. Yes, I know, Bonnie. You guys have all the cool stuff. Yours is from Hawaii, Mike. Yes. How do you say that? Waialu, Waialau, Waialau. I know, I'm way off. Live stream sponsored by the Brooklyn Bean Brewery. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, the Swedish chef. Yes. Ken, your brother is also a professional magician. I wonder if our brothers know one another. <laughs> Mine's pretty. Mine is pretty well known in the magic world. Um. He may know. I don't know. They may know each other. The Swedish chef, Wyalua, 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 Wyalua. Um, that's pretty cool, Ken. Yeah, who is your brother? Sorry, Wyalua. Oh, Lu, Lu. I got it though. L U is Lu. It's not La. Okay, so so I did a lot of film processing before I started my channel. And I processed a lot of cine film, just having fun with it, just kind of doing it on my own, learning. I was trying to learn, you know, the craft of, of cine film processing. I'd always done still film because if you've ever made the transition from still film to cine film, you know that it's a little steep. Uh, and if you've ever gone from cine film to still film, you know that that's just a little bunny hop. That's pretty easy to do. That's what I, I, I went the other direction. I went from still film to cine film and I'm happy now that I can, in relative ease, do both. Um, so, but I, I did process quite a bit of, of cine film before my channel and I just started revisiting it. And there's, there's, there's quite a few that I probably will never use on my found film, and a lot of it is found film. And there's quite a lot of it that I probably will never use on my found film. 
but I figure it might be kind of fun to show you guys. So I have one that I scanned today that it's kind of really kind of interesting. And you guys, this is another one where you may want to have to, we may have to show it a couple times. Um, maybe not a couple times. It's a minute and 43 seconds long. So, but there's a lot to unpack in this little video, in this little film, because there's so many little things that you guys are going to see, especially if you're in my age bracket, that you're going to see, that you're going to go, oh my goodness, I remember that. Oh, I remember that. And it's pretty cool. However, however, with that said, it's kind of all over the place. I'll tell you what happened. Somebody, somebody was, I think probably it was either employee or a customer at the counter of the, the electronics section in a department store when they sold Super 8 cameras and film, either testing it, looking at it, pulling the trigger, doing this, see a face, you know, that kind of thing. But it's in a department store, clearly, and you'll you'll understand that in a minute. But I want to show you guys. You, you just got to pay close attention. Uh, you're going to see some thing. I, I won't even give it all away, but I scanned this today. I scanned it uh, uncompressed on my 4K scanner. But I did export it. Um, I did nothing to it. I didn't stabilize it. I didn't adjust the levels. I did nothing to it because I was running a little, you know, I'm always a little late. Um, so keep that in mind. I didn't crop, crop the edge in too much. You'll still see a little bit of the perforation. I think I cropped it a little bit this way. Uh, it's like I say, it's not, it's not perfect. And it was exported as just an, a compressed file. So, uh, I'm talking about Swedish chef scientists actually, and Analyzed his speech and found that it was closer to Norwegian than Swedish. Bonus fact, Swedish is closer to Chinese than Finnish. That is the double facts from Bonnie. I need 123 batteries for my Canon Rebel. Those are pretty easy to find, radios. Uh, my brother is Mr. Illusion in Roseville, California. Mr. Illusion. Uh, I don't know the name. My brother, my, my brother uh, Ken, is Chad Long in Florida. <laughs> Okay, um, getting popcorn ready, melted butter too. All right, one more sip of Brooklyn Bean Brewery. New from Brooklyn Bean Brewery. It's the Cinnamon Subway. Okay, I'm just trying to attract spots. <laughs> hey, Mike is here. Good evening, everyone from Europe, and good morning over there in USA land. Thank you for coming aboard. Sorry I'm late. All right, so really quick, Mike, just to catch you up. But Manny Elmo is what I'm looking forward to the most to get word. Yeah, I want to see it. Mike is Mr. Emotion. <laughs> Mr. Emotion. Keep it up. You can be in the hot seat like me. Uh, so, Mike, craft work. Really quick. This is a found film. I processed this film in... February of 2019. So, what's that, five years ago? We're going to see it really quick. Oh, and look who's here. Travis popped in. Ken says, ha, 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 ha. All right, here we go. You guys ready? We're going to show this film. Found film. This was from 20... This came, by the way, from Rochester, New York. Because I kept notes on these. If you guys know, Rochester, New York is also home of what? I'm going to leave that right there. Okay, here we go. All right, you ready? We're going to click this. We're going to click this. We're going to stop. And here is this found film. Minute 43-ish seconds. Don't blink. And I told you guys it was all over the place. Look at those shelves packed with projectors, film, photo bulbs. Look at that. Now, really appears to be like somebody is, yes, yes, radios, Kodak. I mean, somebody is thumbing through manual, maybe. Just holding the trigger in. <laughs> Tripods, that was film. I cut a lot of this out. A lot of it was black, like right there in between each shot where it turns black. About a minute and a half of this whole film was just that. I saw Castle Films. 
I saw fluorescent bulbs. This is Kodachrome 2, by the way, from 1967, this roll was manufactured. There's Thelma. There's Charlie. Look at the fishing poles. Sporting goods. Yeah, I'm not much of a narrator, sorry. I wish I could figure out what, based on the stores in the window back there, where this was. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? And that was Kodachrome 2. Kodachrome 2 from five years ago that I processed. I did that in HD 110B at 69 degrees Fahrenheit for three minutes. Three minutes. Tester film. Yeah, a radios, I, but if, I agree. I, if that was my first thought. I feel like, though, if they're going to use tester film, it seems like it would get expensive because that film lasts three minutes and if every customer that picked up a camera used a roll of film to test a camera hmm it's a candy store that's exactly right Travis <laughs> wow this makes me drool I wish I could go back in time and go window shopping for a br oh wouldn't that be so cool start all over again love it avant-garde for yeah it is <laughs> this is a kind of chaotic videography that would make an awesome music video or grunge band I need to go through a lot of my old films because I have so much cool stuff from these found films that I should try and put something together Henry A. Strong co-founder of Kodak uh, was he the co-founder of Kodak? Kodachrome Russell yes very awesome Clap, clap, clap. You can get a voice modulator if you want to sound like Morgan Freeman. Like, there's no way I could sound that cool. However, I do like the voice modulator. Stuff like that fascinates me. That was cool, Dave. Yeah, it does me too, Mike. Christ, this is so wild, so expressionist. It says so much without saying anything at all. Wow, what a ride. I suppose this was all shot on 12 you, you might be right Mike it may have been a lot slower speed because everything really is pretty quick I rendered it at 18 frames per second but everything goes by pretty quick yeah I could totally see that what did Rimjet say did I miss Rimjet oh yeah the grunge band I could too <laughs> Woo, grunge videos with the blue tint to them yes please Love to do a collab for our band, Mike. You just let me know, Russell. I'm in. Tobin's photo and video with AI. Yeah. Digital people want scratchy. Perf film used for overlays, light burns, etc. I know. Everybody's trying and trying and trying to get the perfect overlays of old film. They really are. I probably should upload some of it to the uh, the stock footage sites. By the way, I bet you could pronounce the. I bet you can't pronounce the letter. Uh, is that an umlaut above the O? Correctly. O. O. Is that close, Bonnie? Trevor says, if I could go back to 1980 with 2024 inflation money. I'd raid all of Kmart Super 8 film, <laughs> as would I. I'd just like to go back to 1980 also. I want to go back to 1986. I'm graduating high school. I'm enjoying as much Kodachrome film as I could possibly get in my refrigerator. And I'm taking lots and lots of photographs. Yeah, but they would probably reject the current year dollar bills, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I did a um, so I did a couple other things I want to I want to bring up. Grad in '84. Woo, go '80s. A uh, couple other things I want to bring up. I did a I did a, a a guy emailed me 
in August of last year, and I just got his email in March because he emailed me at an email address on my website, and my website has not really been publicized yet because it's not finished. And when I finally realized that somebody had emailed me through my website, I looked, and there was 39 emails from people over the last six months. So I got on there, and I had all kinds of people that wanted stuff done. Well, one guy, he says, I got an old camera. It's a Bell and Howell. And he goes, it was my granddad's, or somebody's, I don't know. But he goes, I'll send you the camera if you're interested. It has an old roll of Kodachrome in it. And he goes, if you'll just process the Kodachrome and see if there's anything on it, you keep the camera in the case that it came in. I said, well, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, whatever. If Even if it doesn't work, I, you know, I'm that guy. You know, I'll help the guy out. So I get the camera. And, you know, it's a pretty cool camera. This is what he sent me. <laughs> it is so funky. We're going to talk about this. This is a funky little camera. I haven't used it yet. But it does run. I definitely go back to 84, my birth year. Lucky! That's more like the letter A. O is more like O. Oh, okay. So you say it like we say O. Like the letter O here is just pronounced O. O, oh, see? you. Uh, Mike had it. It's the 1980s. It's the 1980s. They aren't going to look that closely. <laughs> it's more code. <laughs> oh god band James band <laughs> band James band James I guess it would be ball is a that a sounds like aw right on wood grain huh bell and how filmo sound but it's not it's funny because it is a filmo sound eight but there's it's not a sound camera you feel old Russell <laughs> don't feel old like you too Oh yes, it yells 1970s design. Hmm. Hey, don't feel, uh, if you guys need to, if you guys are feeling old, I'll throw the picture of Mike flying O up with uh, Wolfman Jack. <laughs> I'm just busting your chops. He was a young tyke in that photo. Yeah, you graduated in 78. My dad and stepmom were married that year. Cassette film O sound camera. Cocaine and hairspray. Big, big hairspray. This is the Bell & Howe Auto Load. I don't really know much about it. It's the Filmo Sound 8. And it has this handle that... You really got to ratchet down. Now. Right? Trigger up front. Right? <laughs> yeah. Ordinary camera. Trigger. Pull the trigger. Wait a minute. That's the viewfinder. <laughs> trigger back here <laughs> seriously how often do you see that the handle only goes on one way by the way trigger back here for the shutter release that's the front of the camera yep all sealed up tight and for the life of me I was like why won't it let's open it up I put a dummy cartridge in there trying to film nothing and then I went whoop How crazy is that? Servo zoom. Zoom works up top. And I think you can also use this top up here. Oh, wow. Check this out. You want slow motion? Watch this. I didn't know this existed till just now. There's a button on top. See it right there? Push. I'm going to assume that's 18 frames a second, but if I push a little harder, sounds like it goes to 36 for a little bit of uh, slow motion. Am I currently watching an atomic bomb? <laughs> oh, wow. I love those tilting handles. That camera reminds me of a toaster. <laughs> Everything sounds nicer with extra O, like Film Boys live stream O Ron. <laughs> this is a cool camera O. It does. O makes a difference. <laughs> Look, flying O. 
Uh, Master of Puppets came out in 86, and I bought it after school. Master of Puppets. <laughs> I was only conceived in the 80s. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. The sound you just made is exactly how you pronounce A. Not like A. A is more like O. Uh, you are so confusing me, Bonnie. But I'm just going to take your word for it. Uh... I am so jelly now. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. It's not the prettiest, but definitely a really interesting, clever design. Very boxy, but really has an interesting appeal. The multi-speed push button is pretty clever. It is clever. I kind of wish they had it on here. It doesn't go in any farther. But, you know, if you just wanted to do this, I think that's probably going to be easier just to hold it like this, and then you got your finger right here. Oh, I gotta slow that down. Okay. The lens is relatively clear. The viewfinder is a little murky, and there's a, there's like a, a wire that goes like a, uh, I don't know, like at an angle, goes across right through the middle of the screen. <laughs> I don't know what that is. The Bolex Umix 625 is the only Super 8 camera I locally found that hasn't crapped out on me. Well, that's cool, I guess. Travis says, I have two VCRs and blank VHS tapes for demastering Oppenheimer onto VHS. What light meter does it have? Well, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I think it's built in um, because it does have... Yeah, it, it has the needle on the side, but there's also a needle, a large needle, that goes halfway into the viewfinder. And it's not moving. The meter does not work at all on this. So I, I, this is as much as I've done with this camera since I've had it, and I haven't had it very long. I'm not even positive there isn't a battery for the meter somewhere on it, but I don't know. Uh, it takes four AA batteries, regular AA batteries, in here. It's only a two to one zoom. It has a battery test on the side, right here. It also has this press to focus, which I know Bell and Howe on their, those, those, those director series or those Filmo Sonics that they had, they had those fo that, that focus button on the top side of it too, but I, I don't know much about them. Never done a D-Master project, but now I have ideas. <laughs> By the way, if you've seen the one guy who has like 3,000 copies of Titanic on VHS, I have not seen that guy, but man, does he like Titanic. To me, it was just an okay movie. To a lot of people, it was a great movie. Everything is terrible with Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Viewfinder is... Uh, viewfinders on 90% of the Super 8 cameras sadly always suck. Yes, they do. Does it have the jacks for Filmo Sound cassette system? Well... It has a remote, and then it has a jack underneath it. There's a, there's a manual for this on eBay, but I don't want to spend 10 or $20, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know if that bottom jack is for headphones or if it's for the two-prong remote, but I do not see a plug for the Filmo sound, the recorder, no. Um... Uh, you could have a real bad case of trigger thumb. <laughs> dang it. Whoop, dang it. Ah, dang it. Dang it. You could. Love to see some films shot on the new old camera. I am going to, I'm definitely going to use this for sure. Found an eBay listing of the whole 1997 Titanic movie on Super 8 a few months ago. Uh, that would be really cool, Bonnie. Uh, as much as I'm not a huge fan of that movie, having it on Super 8 would be awesome. Every day I regret selling my four-reel original Night of the Living Dead on Super 8. One last thing I want to talk about really quick, or really medium. Tomorrow, my wife and I are going to try to go out and finally finish up on this. 
This is Mike's. It looks like a speed gun. Yeah, it looks like a radar gun, doesn't it, Dave? <laughs> or the laser gun, right? Where they. And then they jump out in the middle of the road. This is Mike's camera, Flying O. It's the Umig C16, and I've been meaning to do a lot with it. I've just been super busy. But I've had it long enough, and I want to, my wife and I want, we're going to probably go to the beach tomorrow, if it's not too cloudy or nasty. Um, and I want to shoot a 100-foot roll of film with this. I've shot two rolls of film in it already. Uh, and you guys have seen one or both. One, I think. But I, I'm going to get everybody's opinion really quick. Um, let me set this down. On what film you think I should shoot? Caliber. What caliber is that camera? That is a that's a that's a 16 caliber. Uh, that's a 16 millimeter camera, Jeffrey. Looks like Johnny Five's decapitated head turned to the side. Johnny Five. Uh, <laughs> All right. Here's the choices. We'll start with the, the, I'm going to shoot one of these rolls of film. This is what I have available. Super old. That is, if you guys don't know, which you don't, how would you? This is Ansco High Pan Reversal. I shot this film with my 100-year-old camera, but I have these. I have a couple of these available to me to shoot. And it came out pretty good, actually. But it's a little crusty. So we're going to do this. Or... We can shoot with this. You guys see that? The old Fuji F250D. That's daylight. ASA ISO 250. And that's old. So if we're looking at probably ISO somewhere around 80 for this right now is what I would shoot that at. So we have this or this. No, these are thimble number five. Number five alive. <laughs> I'm gonna, this is my old reliable, so I'm gonna show you that last. We are going to shoot, like I say, one of these films. This, this is 7285. This is Ektachrome 100D, but the original, the older. Okay, put that right there. Can you guys see it? Okay, 7222. You guys know that, double X negative. That's a 200 speed film, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. 200 no daylight 250 but I would probably overexpose that a little bit too maybe 125 my favorite my favorite black and white negative stock 7231 that's no longer manufactured that's about 80 ISO probably shoot that at around 40 we could shoot this Tri-X which is a 200 ISO see that we could move the coffee. And then, this is an interest, interesting little film. EXR. Now, I don't expect much out of that, so keep that in mind. And I'm going with the group. Uh, this is 100T. I would probably have to shoot this at somewhere around uh, 40. That's probably what I would do with that. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, Vision 2. I have a lot of this. That is Vision 2, right? Yeah. 50D. Whew. Keep in mind, we'll be at the beach. Okay. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 options. Now, I guess if I had to, I would shoot 2 rolls. I mean, if I had to, if you make me. Mm hmm. I don't know what we're going to film. We, it may be too cloudy for the beach stuff. So we're going to go with, uh, you know, whatever we can. <laughs> I will take curtain number two. <laughs> uh, Fuji, I have some of that I want to shoot. Yeah, I, I've shot Fuji before. I don't know if I've ever shot this. I think this is quite old, though, Mike. Um, or newish Kodak. Let's see, I hear that Fuji expired is pretty bulletproof. Doesn't go off as quick as Kodak, is that correct? I think you're right on that, Russell. Um, 
Yeah, I think you're probably right, because Kodak really gets wonky. This one does worry me, this 100T. Um, I have this loaded right here with 100T right now that I need to shoot. That's been sitting there for months. And if I remember right, I shot part of that already, or, or another 50-foot load of that, the other half of that, and it didn't come out very good. So, in reel number four of Night at the Museum on 70 mm only one reel, though, Bonnie. I can't buy partials. Night at the Museum is a fun movie, though. Uh, Mike, you got some EXR. EXR was such a beautiful stock in the 90s. It's just, I don't think it held up too well. 50D for sure, good. That's where I'm kind of leaning, Russell. Because the camera is so unique, I vote color film that will let us see how those lenses to, okay. I got you, Dave, yeah, mm-hmm, 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 I feel you. What film would have the least problem for develop and get the best results? Well, we're gonna get my results, so it's gonna be a little wonky, <laughs> but I mean, honestly, I have the best luck with, probably with ECN2, or, I mean, black and white comes out good. I'm really leaning towards not Kodachrome, I'm sorry, Ektachrome, and not EXR. That's what I'm thinking not. 50D is probably the best at the beach. Yes, probably, Mike. Fujifilm, grr. They need to stop cancel. I know. Good to know about old Fuji. I remember at the antique store for $200, they had a 60 millimeter Hammer Dracula. Oh, a Hammer Dracula movie. Nice. 50D. We got several votes for 50D. All right, let's take 50D off the table because I am going to shoot this roll of film tomorrow in Mike's camera. Is there anything else you guys think? I, I don't think I'm going to go Ansco Chrome because that's just a little too old and I'm not going to have this camera very much longer so if I don't want to I don't want to do that with it I'll, f I'll figure out something else to do with that um, maybe a black and white stock now and I'll save this I might save this for my Aeroflex is that double perf I don't know doesn't really matter say oh it's 2R yeah it's double perf so maybe um, that 50D is single, right? Yep, single perf. That's fine. Yeah, that doesn't have two rows in it, does it, Mike? I can't remember. No, nope. single perf would work just fine. So let's go. What, what would you guys go for 50D? 50, uh, 50D forever. Um, Fuji Digital should be the new name since they rebranded Superior as a lower quality stock and rumor has it it's made by Kodak. Kodak makes everything. Vote 50D. I have five 400 foot rolls of Fuji Eterna 16 millimeter in the fridge. I'm doing that thing where I never have the right project. I do that all the time Russell. <laughs> I'll be excited for any film you use. Me too Mike. 50D forever. Fun fact, the guillotine was still used in France at the time. <laughs> Star Wars Bonnie. Bonnie has those facts. I love it. 50D sounds like a plan. Okay, but really quick, I'm going to I'm going to take this and this off the table. Now, I want some opinion. These are three pretty darn good black and white stocks. Pretty darn good black and white stocks. Now this is a reversal by trade, a reversal stock, this Tri-X, but I always process it as a negative, so I would treat it as a 100 speed film. This is a good film, a fun, fun film. The 7231, it is a negative stock. It's a very slow speed stock, so it's less grainy. And then you have your double X, which is a little bit faster, quite a bit faster than this, but it's also a negative stock. So what would you guys like to see next in black and white 16 millimeter I'm sold I have an idea for stop motion that involves me making nachos <laughs> it sounds like Napoleon Dynamite you guys remember the scene where they, they were doing the nachos and they get big and then small and then 
I, I got to tell you, I, I'm leaning towards one. All right, Jeffrey says here, I'm leaning towards one. We got tri x plus x double x. I feel like I even probably have a roll of super super x in there. Really old. Tri x would be fun. Okay, we got one here and one here. We need one more person to vote for seventy two twenty two, and then we're back to square one again. <laughs> Triple X, oh my. <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> oh, you guys. Where are we at? One minute and 13, one hour and 13 minutes. <laughs> double X. I may have double X, actually. I think what I am going to film tomorrow, if I, time permitting, is. Right there. I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to try to use both of these rolls tomorrow in Mike's camera and let's see what we can get. Perfecto! Perfecto! 7231 plus X negative. It is an 80 ISO film in daylight and 50D, which is a 50 ISO film. Did you know that it's an actually a 12 ISO film? if you shoot it under tungsten lighting because you need filters. Plus X, plus X, plus, I love plus X, Gordon. That's, this is uh, probably my favorite black and white film stock in motion picture ever. I'd like 7276 too. It was a great film stock um, that they made in Super 8. I think they did 16 as well, of course. Guys, listen. It's that time of day, that time of day, where I must say, I, I don't eat hay. Will you be tripoding the camera or handheld or going to dust off the jib? You know what? Ah, oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, my wife got me a new tripod. I want to show you guys really quick. I know this is probably old hat to you guys, but to me, this is a cool... I've had monopods a lot in my life. Monopods are awesome. And I and I probably will tripod some of it, Dave, because um, I don't hand hold very well. This is that knee work. You guys know knee work. But she got me this. And I used it the other, the other day at my daughter. My oldest daughter had a recital, like a... Uh, a function. She plays viola. And um, it worked amazing. It's a monopod, right? The clip I see. Wait, what is that? Only 11 likes? What's going on, people? Look at this monopod. Look at this sucker. But check it. So it is a monopod, and you can take this thing off the bottom and just put the little little thing on there but it has the I know you guys probably have these but the first one I've had right look at that tighten it up these are loose here put my phone on there and I videoed my uh, my daughter's little uh, orchestra thing perfect for just now, I don't think I'm going to put Mike's camera on here because his camera weighs about 68 pounds and this will hold maybe four pounds. I, I kind of always wanted one of these. And then my wife, crazy fool, ordered it and handed it to me. Look at that. Monopod Nation. Watching but only 11 likes. The clip I sent was... You. Oh, that was double X. Oh, I forgot about that, Barry. I wanted to show that clip. Barry sent me a clip. A um, It was really cool. <laughs> next week or the week after if we don't do next week. Uh, really cool. I don't want to give it away. Yes. Monopod. They work great. I know. I like, I, I've always seen the ones that have the little tripod attachment. But it has the other little attachments. It has the other little, um, you know, 
little attachment that you add to the bottom. The regular monopod foot, you know, a little pointy rubber. And then it has the, if you're outside, you know, on the dirt, concrete, whatever, the metal point. So you could just take this bottom piece off and put the other one on. Pretty good deal. Should do a 40, a 48 hour live on the 50th. Wow. <laughs> oh. I long for a Flowtech tripod, such a dream. Yeah, there's other ones that are way better than this, but I saw this one and I told my wife about it. I'm like, that would be cool. It was here the next day. Tell them to get those likes up. Get those likes up. Hey, if you guys wouldn't mind, hit the little like button. Or do I gotta get Piper in here to make you guys do that again? I had to do that on Instagram today. Oh, cool. What, get the likes up? Monopod? What's that, wait. Monopod something, something professionals. It, the little heart thing is in the way. Monopod? Oh, I know, <laughs> oh, I know professionals, come on. <laughs> oh, I know professionals. I hit the ramp, I turned over, I landed on my wheels. I got out of the car. I said, what are you worried about? <laughs> Sorry, man. Two hours. Oh, maybe two hours. I could see that happen in Bonnie. Not sure I could do 48 hours. <laughs> could I do a 48 hour live stream? Two That's days? Two days. <laughs> I know what Bonnie meant. <laughs> Oy, no professionals. <laughs> what was his name, Russell? He was the IT guy, right? The... <laughs> The IT nerd. <laughs> Going off dawn, have you? All right. Guys, listen. We're going to... Uh, yes, so good. <laughs> we're going to wrap it up. Piper, what do we got to tell them to do? Smash that like button. Smash that like button. If you haven't, guys, it would mean a lot to me if you would smash it. Two-hour live film boy nifty 50 stream. I got to get Dave Knopp to, uh, to design a little... A little promo poster for the 50th live stream. Okay. Well, see you on the what? See you on the very next go around. <laughs> Guys, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Every week, it just gets more and more fun. I know this one loves it. Um, there was a streamer here in Sweden who did a 60 hour. Oh, no. Had a great time as usual. In case we don't see you next week, happy birthday. Thank you, Remjad. I really appreciate it. Simon is Simon, the IT guy. That's right. <laughs> Take care, Mike. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Everybody, every week, I really appreciate your support. And I uh, couldn't do it without you. She couldn't either. See you on the next go around, right, Piper? Huh? <laughs> see you.